Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I thought I would just do another product review video. This is kind of a continuation of my last video. I have an update already from the last one that I did. I talked about this Born Pretty nail polish and although I love the way it applies, I don't think it lasts very long. I did this on Saturday and it is now Wednesday and it started to chip yesterday morning, Tuesday morning. So this did not last long at all. This doesn't speak to the top and base coat that I used because I have used better quality nail polish with those top and base coats and it lasted much longer. So it goes on really well, it looks really nice, it does not last long. So I hope you didn't run out and buy this one because of how much I raved about the application. Let's talk about, again, the last video I just started with what was on me. So I'm going to start with my mascara and my lip gloss. I used this mascara for the second time this morning. This is the Fat uh, Censored Lash mascara. If you're new to my channel, I don't swear. So if you have children around, it, it's definitely appropriate. I tried this for the second time this morning and there are pros and cons. Let me show you the spoolie. The spoolie is a little bit on the bigger side. I like a smaller, thinner spoolie. I feel like I can get more control and I don't accidentally hit my eyelid or under my eye with it. So it's a little bit on the bulkier side, which is okay. It's still a manageable size. It takes a longer time to dry than I am used to with other mascaras in general. I've noticed both times that I've used this mascara, uh, I have it on now, so I will zoom in while I tell you about it. I've noticed that both times I've used this mascara, when I looked at myself in the mirror on my first back bathroom break of the day at work, I've noticed that there are little dots of black under my eye. I think what that is is that this takes longer to dry than most mascaras. I think that once I leave the house and I have it all cleaned up, it looks fine and then by the time I get to work, I have blinked or whatever and it has my bottom eyelashes or something has somehow gotten down here. It does go on evenly and nicely. I do like the way it applies. I just think it there's something about it that's a little bit messier to apply. I haven't only had the issue with it showing up on my under eye. I have also, as I'm applying, had a harder time just not getting it accidentally onto my eyelid while I'm applying. It's almost like it very easily transfers from the lash to my eyelid somehow. I do like that it applies evenly and I do think it is lengthening and volumizing enough to my liking. I have let you know that I like a lengthening volumizing mascara, so keep that in mind when I talk about mascaras. That's my preference for mascaras. I would not purchase this again if it showed up in a sale just because there are mascaras out there that I like much better than this one. And this isn't a bad mascara, it just takes a while to dry, the formula does. Now, the lip gloss that I am wearing, I got from the Tribe Beauty Box, and I love this. This is the Cos Cosmetics, so it doesn't say it on here. It's C-A-S Cosmetics, and it looks like this. This is so pretty, so pretty. It goes on well, it's not sticky, it's not weird, it just, yeah. It's so pretty. I love this stuff. I am not typically a lip gloss person either, and I've been reaching for this, which says a lot. It is just so pretty. It's so pretty. It's got that iridescent look to it. I love this lip gloss a lot. So I definitely, I had never heard of Cos Cosmetics before, C-A-S Cosmetics. So that's everything new that I have to tell you about with what I'm wearing on me right now. My hair is still the same products. I need to wash it tonight. Uh, so there's no updates on my hair products for tonight. The thing that I'm really excited to tell you all about, and I thought I might have, I, I was thinking about doing a dedicated video about this, but I'm just throwing it in here now. I'm ready to talk about it. So this is the Murad Environmental Shield Rapid Age Spot and Pigment Lightening Serum. It looks like this. I lost the cap. So this has really good reviews. I have seen many, many people talk about it and say that it worked for their age spots or their sunspots on their chest or their face. I have very old sunspots. These are from when I was about 10 years old. I grew up in Southern California and I don't burn. So, well, I mean, it takes a lot for me to burn. 
So I never thought about putting on sunscreen. One day at the beach, I did fall asleep and I got a horrible, horrible sunburn when I was about 10 years old. So I damaged this area of my body very, very young. I have had these spots for a long time. So these are old, old spots. I don't know if that matters as far as how well this will work. Now this has an ingredient in it called hydroquinone. I was saying quinone, it's hydroquinone. And I wasn't sure about using this. I figured I would talk to my dermatologist about it. I bought this in a winter sale. And so I finally got a chance to go to the dermatologist. I had squamous cell carcinoma. That's what this uh, scar is right here. So I had to go to the dermatologist. So I brought this with me and she looked at it and she said, you can use that that's fine I doubt it will really work I don't know why she's a very busy doctor so I didn't want to keep her with too many questions she was already doing me a favor just letting me know about this so she said she said you can tr you can use this and it might work that was her exact words and then she proceeded to tell me about I'm gonna show you a before and after to showing you that it didn't really work for me she proceeded to tell me about I IPL treatment that a lot of women do that seems to be effective and it's intense pulsed light treatment and that might be something that I could look into down the line it's like $350 for a session I saw online so I'm not gonna be doing that anytime soon but in Sometime in the future, when I'm rolling in money, <laughs> I will maybe look into that. So I will show you the before and after now. And you can get a load of that, stay on that as long as you want, but I really see no difference after using this. And how long did I use it? I used it for about three weeks nightly, once a day. So it didn't do anything for me. If you are still curious about trying it out for yourself, my again, my dermatologist did say that that ingredient is safe and it, it isn't like it's a pleasant product to use. It is, it has a little bit of a strange smell, a little bit medicine-y maybe would be the word, and it is a little bit gooey and slightly sticky. I think that the next thing I might try is using it for a couple of weeks on my face. As far as how long to use it, people say that they have noticed a difference in a matter of a week or even a few days. I have seen some people say, for me, it didn't work which is a big bummer I really oh I wanted a like nice smooth lovely decollete or decolletate however you say that word so that's my review of this and again Murad is owned by Unilever Unilever is not cruelty free Murad is there you go that's the spiel there next I want to talk about cleansing oils I have three to tell you about and I did uh, this I got in a Vox box influencer Vox box it's the Dermalogic pre-cleanse. Dermalogica also owned by Unilever. But Dermalogica is cruelty free, just owned by Unilever. And then I have this oil cleanser. I've talked about this a few times. I got this in a Pettyver box and this is from Kahina Giving Beauty, which is the name of the company. Interesting name. I'm not sure what it means. And then I have this Lifestyle Co. 100% Natural Ultimate Makeup Remover, which is an oil cleanser essentially. These are all three extremely similar in their smell, their consistency, and the way they perform. They do a wonderful job as oil, as far as oil cleansers go, if you like oil cleansers, but it's amazing. I almost want to try like the Pepsi Challenge or whatever that game is where people tell you if it's Pepsi or Coke. I, I don't know that I would be able to tell you which one I was using if I was blindfolded. They're all wonderful. They all smell herbal and amazing, and uh, they work. Some of the similar ingredients, I suppose, oh, the Dermalogica one has a peg in it, so if peg is an ingredient that you're trying to avoid, that would be something to avoid. I'm sure that the Kahina Giving Beauty one does not have pegs in it uh, or any high, potentially toxic ingredients because it's from Pediver. Pediver has a whole list of ingredients that if a product has it in it, they will not send it to you in a box. They are a cruelty-free and non-toxic subscription box, $18 a month. 
month. They're awesome. Anyway, and then, so let's see. So I don't have an ingredients list though for it, so I can't tell you what might be similar in there. And I don't have an ingredients list on this one either. Oh, oh no I do. And the ingredients in this are so simple. Okay, so based on ingredients, I would eliminate the Dermalogica oil. So this one has the least clean ingredients, the Dermalogica. I, again, I'm sure the Kahina Giving Beauty one has uh, clean ingredients. And then this Lifestyle Co. one has almond oil, lavender essential oil, vitamin E, and aloe vera extract. That is wonderful. There is this a Los Angeles based company, got it in the last, ooh. I got it in the fall add-ons they are cruelty free and I guess non-toxic I can't remember if they brag about being non-toxic but they are cruelty free they definitely bragged about being cruelty free but that's wonderful to see so few ingredients in this this is a great product I just got this in FabFitFun highly recommend now I tried the bloom meltdown acne treatment I tried it once on a little blemish on my chin and this is what it looks like this is what I'm talking about and the first thing I want to say is that this bloom company if you go to their website they actually have a subscription box for period products which starts at like eight dollars a month or something like that which is really really reasonable so I'm actually really quite curious about that and I might subscribe to them and what you can do with their your, their subscription service is you can add if you need something like an acne treatment or they also have the um, oil nope the rollerball essential oil thing <laughs> for <laughs> which you can apply topically for period cramps so this is their acne treatment oil and it it's not the best smelling it smells a little bit like mentholatum it's not like a great smell and it but it smells a, a very aromatic and like an oil that is in it I'll double check what the active ingredient is in this for you and put it across the screen here it will also help describe the smell I'm sure because it, I don't know that I'm exactly on point with mentholatum something a subscriber friend pointed out about this to Hi Paula. She mentioned, she left a comment in my FabFitFun add-on unboxing that you should be careful when you use this because if you put it, say you have a breakout on your chin and you put it all over your chin, this really wants to draw out oils and impurities. She did it and she woke up the next morning with a really bad breakout on her chin. She said it was awful. I had put it on the night before she told me that and I did notice that it had drawn out the pus in the blemish that I was aiming for, and then it also drew out a little pus right next to it in another blemish. So I also had the same experience that if you use it and you don't really aim for exactly the blemish that you want to treat, you might end up drawing out more impurities and creating more blemishes as your skin expels all of the yuckiness in it. I have tried using it on a couple of other cystic-like pimples that I have right now, one here and one here, and it didn't do anything. For me, this was only really effective on something that had a white head that was ready to surface. If you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, but if you're new to my channel, I I do updates on my product reviews. I will do a first impression and then I will let you know if my opinions changed as I'm using the product and then I will do a final review when that product is empty. I'm a firm believer that if we use a product we can't really go off of our first impression. We could have done it wrong or just something, some other factor could have come into play where it didn't work as well as it could for us. So I like to give you updated product reviews as I go along. I am going to talk about this Tula Kefir Moisture Repair Pressed Serum. Oftentimes in FabFitFun sales, there will be a product where on the forum, everyone is just raving about it and gunning for it, and you, it's so hard to snag and get into your cart. This was one of those products in one of the winter sales, I believe it was. I think it was the winter edit. Nope, it was probably one of the spring sales. Spring edit, I think it was. Who cares? This has silicones in it. I am not one of those people who says no silicones ever. There are some people who really don't do well with silicones and need to follow that rule. I'm not one of them. What I don't like to use silicones for though 
is in my nighttime skincare routine. A silicone maybe in the last thing that I put on in my nighttime skincare routine would be okay. I could see that, you know, helping to trap in the moisture with some sort of barrier. I believe that that's why some people like to also top off their nighttime skincare with Vaseline. It traps in moisture. But with silicone in a serum, which is not the last thing you do at night, you're supposed to be able to put on a moisturizer after serum. So to have a serum that has silicones as the first two or three ingredients, you're essentially putting liquid plastic onto your face and therefore creating a barrier that your moisturizer that you will be putting on afterward will have a hard time or not be able to penetrate. So I can see this actually being over time very detrimental to a nighttime skincare routine. If I'm wrong, I welcome comments and suggestions and I don't claim to be an expert. That is just my intuition telling me that this doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense that serums should have silicones in them. I think silicones work in hair care. I think silicones work in primers. I think silicones can work, like I said, maybe in moisturizer as a way to help trap in everything that you have put onto your face and make sure that it really absorbs as much as it can. I just can't see this being good for your skin. And on the forum, I did see one or two people speak up saying that, yeah, they used this and it gave the illusion that it made their skin feel really soft because that's another thing. Silicone makes things feel soft and slippery and smooth. And so if you put this on and you think it's making your skin feel so nice, that's not your skin that feels nice. That's the silicones that feel nice. A lot of people on the forum would speak up and say, yeah, I used that. And then I noticed right away after I stopped that my skin didn't feel as nice anymore. And in fact, it felt worse than it did when I first started using it. And if it felt worse, that would likely be because their moisturizer wasn't able to penetrate the silicone heavy serum that they had just put on their face and therefore their moisturizer was just wasted. I don't think that this is a good product for our skin. I am gonna talk about this product now. This fell so it is dented because it fell in my shower and it's also a little bit wet from being in the shower. Okay, so this is the Game Changer We Are Paradox hair mask. And I got this in the summer edit sale and I like a lot of things about it. It's a UK based company and I like that it they make a point not to use plastic for their packaging, which I just love that. It's organic, quilty free, all of that stuff. I like the smell. It smells herbal and spa-like. I describe a lot of things that way and I just must really like that kind of a smell because I'm always really excited when something smells herbal and spa-like. I just wish it felt a little bit more nourishing in my hair. It feels like a hair conditioner. It doesn't really feel like a hair mask. I've used it twice. I will update you if it changes. This is an empty. So this is Origins. This is their Refreshing Eye Cream to Brighten and De-Puff. This is a morning eye cream. I got this in my Influencer Best of 2018 box. It is all empty. I used it every morning and it lasted me a good six months. It was, it's a really nice product. Origins is cruelty free, however they are owned by Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder is not cruelty free. The reason that this is brightening is because it has mica in it, so it gives you a little bit of a shimmer. It is really pretty, it's a subtle, it's just a touch of mica. I'm gonna leave a link to a video that Refinery29 did about that ingredient that is a, it's on the depressing side, but I can't help but share all the information that I learn with you guys, so I'm gonna leave a link about it if you want to get depressed about mica go ahead and check it out it's not that we need to avoid that ingredient but there needs to be some reform about the way that it is mined anyway I thought that this was extremely nice lovely to use every morning it felt very silky going on and it left that little shimmer I won't repurchase it because it's owned by Estee Lauder and I'm doing my best to avoid buying things that aren't entirely cruelty free if I didn't care that this was owned by Estee Lauder though this is a lovely item cream I do recommend it it has a great shimmer to it it's good it's it's good stuff I would love to try more origin stuff but owned by Estee Lauder so I'm not gonna be doing that I have this empty this is the may love glycolic night cream 
the Night Renewer Glycolic Acid Cream. This may love stuff. It is a company that was founded by some MIT graduates. It's based in San Francisco. Their mission is to create an affordable, simple, high-end skincare line, and they're doing a really good job of it. This is a very straightforward cream. I enjoyed using it. I can't say if I noticed that there was a big difference because of this in my skin. I used this right when I just kind of dove in and did an overhaul on my skincare and generally my skin improved and looked more glowing and healthier and softer. So this was part of that whole mix. A lot of people really like this. If this shows up in a sale again, I do highly recommend it. I have heard some doctors assert though that glycolic acid isn't necessarily an effective treatment to be used at home. Something about the size of the molecule, I'm not a scientist, you might wanna look into that. I have seen that written in articles and I have heard that said. That aside, if you like glycolic acid, this is wonderful. If it shows up in a FabFitFun sale, definitely get it. This is another empty, and if you've been watching me, you know I love this stuff. This is the Hey Honey Walk the Walk Propolis Foot and Heel Cream. If you are vegan, you don't, don't want to use propolis. It comes from bees. It is harvested from them same way, not the same way honey is, but by beekeepers. It is, it's a mixture of their saliva and tree sap, something like that, and it creates kind of a glue that they can build their hives with. Propolis, that's what that is. This is empty. I love it. I have another one going in my nightstand. I just gifted one to my mother-in-law for her birthday. I love this stuff. This is a really good foot cream. And while we are on foot creams, I have this Levito Thera Intensive Foot Cream. This is a company that's in Israel and they're cruelty free, all that wonderful stuff. And this is a very nice foot cream as well. I don't like it quite as much as my Hey Honey because I think I like the Hey Honey smell a little bit better, but it is, it's just as good. It's wonderful and it smells good too. They both smell wonderful. They both feel really good on the feet. They both feel very nourishing. I think that this is really good too. The Hey Honey has a slightly more minty scent and then this one, I think it might be the tea tree oil I'm smelling. Yeah, I think it smells a little bit more like tea tree oil. It has tea tree oil in it, so that would make sense. It is Achillea, Myrtle, and tea tree. That's what I'm smelling. So that's the difference in the smell. They're both wonderful foot creams. So I have seen both foot creams come up in FabFitFun sales. So if you're having trouble deciding, the difference is that one smells a little bit more minty, the Hey Honey, and then this one smells more like tea tree. If you saw my fall add-ons unboxing, you saw that I was really disappointed to learn that this is for oily skin. This is the Terramare Active Coconut charcoal clarifying cleanser it's a really good size bottle this is five ounces and it says here that it's for oily skin I don't recall seeing that anywhere in the description I looked again it was not on the Terramare website either I think on the website it says maybe combination to oily I'm not even sure it was not clear to me that this was for oily skin I was bummed I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and use this anyway, because this is basically coconut oil and charcoal and some other things. So I figured if it has coconut oil in it, it can't be for oily skin. I don't know, I don't know what Terramare is doing with this one. Typically, I really love Terramare stuff. I have been using this for about a week now, and it's black, it's got charcoal in it, it's black, and it, feels a little bit like a cream cleanser. You can see how it's running. And I really liked it at first. I thought it felt really good on my skin. The smell reminds me a bit of Malibu rum minus the rummy part of Malibu rum. And I think when I had that association, that's when I kind of stopped liking it because I don't like to drink alcohol. I think that's when it stopped. At first, I liked it. I thought it felt really good and almost like milky in a way and really nourishing. It does not feel drying at all. So I'm not sure what the deal is with it saying it's for oily skin. I think that this is a new product for Terra Mera. I can't find any reviews on it anywhere and I couldn't when I purchased it, but I just took the gamble because I do like Terra Mera. I don't recommend this. Let's 
talk about something from Terra Mare, I do recommend that would be the Terra Mare Pomegranate and Evening Primrose Eye Cream. It's right here. I got this in the fall edit sale and it lasted me a good six months or something and I used it every single day, every night because in the morning I was using this Origins one and it is really, really nice. It's very silky, very smooth. I'm not sure what the PAO time frame is on it because I, well, one, I can't get any more of this product out no matter how much I shake it, no matter how much I tilt it, I just can't, it's, it's toast. But also the consistency kind of changed a little bit so I think that it may have expired anyway which is good timing because I can't get anything out of it. I'm gonna be moving on from this, or I did move on from this, and I moved on to this, the Elemis Peptide 4 Eye Recovery Cream. Now this came in my Elemis Winter Collection Kit that came in the silver bags that were available in the winter sales, and that was an amazing deal. That came with the silver makeup bag, which is a good size, and it came with this night cream oil, and then it also came with this 1000 flower mask. It was these three things for $21 and a really nice makeup bag. I don't think that Fit Fun really has those prices anymore. Their, their sale prices have gone up, which is a bummer. So I have this in my hand too. This is an empty. I'll talk about the eye cream first. And I think that this eye cream is very nice. It's very silky. It goes on well. It's it, it, I like it a lot. I, I have liked all of these products, so I've talked about that. Well, now I kind of roped this into it too, so I'll talk about that as well. So this is the Night Recovery Cream Oil. This was the first time I used a cream oil, and it's the reason that I described the Terra Mare Cleanser as a cream oil, because it just has that kind of consistency. Whatever you can imagine, cream and an oil mixing together and that kind of consistency. There's something, so, oh gosh. So this smells like this. The eye cream smells like this night recovery cream oil, but it's just not as intoxicating. This is so, oh my gosh, I can just feel myself something about this. <laughs> It's heavenly. It smells so good and it's almost a little bit like gingerbready. I've talked about this. This is empty. It's wonderful to use. And then this, there are a thousand flower mask. I've talked about this before too. I think this is wonderful. It has humic and fulvic acid. So those are naturally sourced ingredients from the earth for our skin and they are very beneficial. And this is also very heavenly to use. This is, uh, you have to be careful. This one can stain your clothes and your towels and whatnot. So when you use it, just be careful if you ever decide to get it. I really like this. When it goes on, it, there's almost a very, very subtle sting but it feels, it's like a good sting and you feel like it's doing something for you. <laughs> anyway, this, I, I meant to just talk about the eye cream and then I ended up just talking about all of these, but this was an amazing set to get. Okay, I think I'm done talking now. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.